Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for another video. I'm very happy to welcome another fantastic teacher who was willing to join us. Uh, Janis Vax, thank you so much for uh, coming to join us today. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, for those of you uh, who don't know, uh, Janov is a well-known and very appreciated teacher in the UK and in Israel. Uh, he's also, and Janov, please tell me if I get this correct, correct uh, runner-up in a, the World Championship uh, with the Israeli junior team. Is that correct? correct. And some time ago, but yes, correct. Yes, yes. I, I, I would, I would lead with that. I would have, I would, I. Did you get a, did you get a medal? I, uh, yeah, a medal or a cup. I don't remember. It was more than fifty. I would years still ago. be wearing yeah. mine. So, yeah. uh, Yanif, what, uh, what do you have for us today? This is a hand that Yanif put together for us. Yes. Uh, what do you have for us? Well, I've chosen a hand that focuses on the play and. I'm always looking for something general, so trying to have few relatively easy steps to lead you to usually, you know, uh, success or, you know, getting as many tricks as possible, which is our goal when we are playing. Uh, we'll, we'll just go over the bidding quickly. We already have, as you can see, the game and the opening lead. We can ignore for one second the opening lead. I just wanted to see both hands. Okay, uh, so let me load up the hand. The opening oh, game. Right. Ah, sorry, sorry. I thought uh, the hand was already there. Okay, so oh, now we have it. So the opening uh, bid in south is very straightforward with 12 points, five cards in hearts, uh, just a, a very basic one heart uh, opening bid. For mm -hmm. no, okay, so first of all, we can support the heart, so there is no question we are going to support the heart. Some people might think about bidding the spades. I don't see the relevance once you found the 5-4 fit in hearts. I think it's mm. redundant. The, the second thing is the evaluation, because we have 12 points in north. Some people will take it as an invitation. But in my opinion, having the extra heart uh, is already enough to push us for game. Yeah, so as you can see, North chose to bid four hearts directly. If you are a very cautious player, you might go for a three hearts invitation. Mm. So that's uh, for basic bidding. Now, don't forget that because of the four heart fit, there are, if you're using conventions such as Jacobi or Bergen raises, you could use them. Yes, that's usually more for slam bidding. Yes, because if you bid four hearts and your partner happened to have it, you know, 18, 19 points or some. Uh, a very nice, strong, and distribution hand. The only option or the main option will be just to ask for aces, thinking about the slam. Uh -huh. yes. But once you use Jacobi to not Trump, it gives you more options to communicate before deciding about the slam. Okay. But that's only for you know more advanced or people who use more conventions. Otherwise, just bidding for hearts is absolutely fine and definitely correct. Okay, can, can I ask a quick question sitting south? Is yes. Norse four heart bid, is it a sign off? Could we keep oh, bidding? Okay, so a four heart bid is, is not a sign off again because the one heart opening bid is very wide range description from 12 or even 11 up to 20 and sometimes even 21. So if the opener has a very strong hand, he should or oh, could try to go uh, forward towards land, okay? Just to quickly compare it to a one or trump opening bid, which is always accurately described, and therefore, for instance, if I open one or trump and partner bid three or trumps, this is a 100% sign of bid where the opener is definitely not going to do anything further. But this is not the same position as uh, the one heart is not, as I said, is not accurately described. So is it clear enough? Was a bit stronger. Maybe South would keep going, but here, Four Hearts is the perfect contract, however you would have reached it. Here, South is a very, you know, very basic opening bid, so he has no nothing to add here. There is no question uh, that he okay. would stop the bid at that point. Great. Uh, okay, so now, uh, we, as, as I said, we'll focus more on the, on the play. So we have, it's like a checklist that 
it is recommended to do when the game starts. And I think that in other videos that I've seen already, uh, other teachers, teachers have mentioned that, and that's excellent because uh, I think the most common mistake that people do is to start playing the hand. Like if we look at this hand, you look at you look at the spades and you're saying they let the spades. I have only the ace and the king, so I have to use one of them in south. And in north, I'm going to play low card anyway. I don't want to play a higher card as they let the queen. So the first trick is very clear in this hand. There is no questions from my point of view. What am I going to do in the first trick? And the right. problem with that is that. When the game starts, there is some kind of a rhythm, yes? And, you know, you play the first trick, and you're saying, okay, you know, now I'll play something, maybe maybe you'll draw the drums, maybe you'll do something else, but you don't have in your mind the, 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 the game as a whole, yes? Because you are, fo- you are focusing on fragments, you're focusing on one suit or what to do next, and that's not recommended, that will lead, that might lead you to neglect potential options, or very common, you might realize something during the game, but it will be too late. Yes, like the the classic, classic mistake that every bridge player, whatever your level is, have encountered, is that you have few tricks on the dummy and you can't get them. Yes. I'm sure it happened to you. I mean, there is yes. no British players on the planet that didn't encounter this, this, uh, you know, this feeling of, yeah, of course. looking at looking at the promised land and uh, uh, three tricks on the table, and you need some uh, Uber or something to get. The the key, the key to avoid, you know, sometimes it's it's not possible, but usually it could be avoided by planning the hand in advance, not rushing into playing uh, anything, okay, before you Mm. have it. And we, of course, going to demonstrate those steps in this hand, but remember, this is general. You could implement those steps on any hand that you play. Uh, Today we're doing a trump contract, so it's, it's specifically for trump contracts. Uh, maybe we'll do another video on all trumps uh, sometimes with pleasure, but now we are with some contracts. So I'll go over those uh, steps. We'll see how we implement it here, and I hope that you will be able to implement it the next time you are uh, declared. So, shall we start? or uh, Yes. Okay, so first step. First step, always trump suit. There is nothing more important than the trump itself in a trump contract. The one number you should have in your hand, in your head, throughout the hand. So if I'm coming to a, a table, yes, if it's online or physical, and I'm looking, I'm going to the declarer, let's say six tricks in or whatever the stage is, and I would ask, tell me how many trumps your opponents have at this point. They must say it in one second, because this mm. number must your hand the whole time it's not something that you should look for it's there okay once it, it got to zero and you know that they have none okay now you can you know you can you can forget about it it's fine mm. but this is something you should follow and that's also very helpful for the technique of counting the technique of counting is to count backwards yes mm. so I how many trumps I have. As the dummy is revealed, I can see four trumps on the dummy. I can see five trumps in my hand. In my hand, Nine opponents have four. From this point on, the number of four, how many op- uh, uh, trumps the opponents have, will be in my head. And every time that the opponents will play trump, whether I, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, whether I play the trumps to draw them, whether they trump them, whatever happens, I will deduct from this number until we'll get to zero. And of course, our goal is to get rid of uh, all of them as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. So that's okay. Clear enough? Yes. Okay. Second step. I want to locate where are my problems. And the problems in a trump contract, we usually look at losers. Now, what is a loser? Loser is a little bit of an elusive term. Okay. Mm. Is loser, losers, I'm thinking about my opponents, not about me. And some mm. people think that losers are the opposite of winners, but, but it's not correct. 
there is no connection between winner and loser, even though in the language it sounds as if they have right. something to do with each other, but they don't, okay? Right. And that's why it's a bit confusing. So don't think about losers as con in connection to winners, something that we usually use in no term contracts, counting your tricks or your winners, okay? Hmm. I'm thinking about my opponents, and I, I'm thinking, I know which cards my opponents have. That's the game, because I can see all my cards. So right. I'm trying to think, how can they use these cards to win tricks against me? And those are mm. the losers. Tricks mm. that opponents can win. Okay? So you, I think that if you think that way, it's a bit easier. Okay? That is so let's look, at this, let's look at the suits. Okay? I can see that South, my hand has more trumps than North, and therefore I'm focusing on South as my base. This is where... I'm uh, th that's where my, my losers might be, okay? Mm. Because, for instance, if we look at the spade suit, after winning my ace and king, I can trump the next uh, spade that opponents might want to play, and therefore uh, I don't have losers. If I would have looked at north, then you can see that there are potential losers in the spade suit, okay? Ah. But remember, my base is south. Why? Okay. That's where the trumps are longer, okay? So in general, when you count losers, you look, your base is the hand where the trumps are longer, okay? okay. Whether or not that uh, uh, your hand is declared or dummy's hand, whichever hand has the most yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely doesn't matter if it's dummy or declared. And okay. the classic position is when a transfer was used, the dummy will always have the longer trumps. Yeah, so right. it's not uh, it, it's not a question of dummy or declarer. It's a question of right. the longer side of the trumps. We are going to ignore the position of obviously that it's the same. It could be four, four, or five, five, and then uh -huh. it could be a bit trickier. And then you should choose a side. We we'll leave it. It's a little bit more complex. I don't think we'll have enough time in one hand to discuss that. But maybe one of the future videos will do. You know, uh, uh, when it's four, four, five, five, which is interesting as well. So we'll focus on when it's not the same. You know, when it's a different number, both uh, in, uh, either sides. Okay, so focusing on south, as I said, spade suit. We don't have any uh, losers. Let's go with the hard suit. The hard suit. We assume no losers here, even though in theory it could be, you know, the distribution of the trumps could be four and zero, which would be very bad for us. But assuming, really unlucky and really bad, really frustrating. Yeah. You know, even though, even in this case, you could overcome that because you have the 10-9. But let's ignore that. On a 2-2 two, two or 3-1 distribution, of course, that we should count at zero okay. uh, losers. Okay, so we have diamonds and clubs. Diamonds is very, very easy to count because we can see that we're missing the ace, king, and queen. We can see that the opponents can win two rounds of diamonds with no problem. They have the ace and the king. And after those two rounds, of course, that, that's it because we can uh, trump afterwards. Okay, so I think the diamond suit to count losers is very straightforward. Okay, mm -hmm. okay club suit. Club suit is the most uh, interesting sort, I think, here, in terms mm. of counting losers. Because some players would say, I don't have club losers. Why? Because I have the ace, and then I have the king. After those two rounds that I've won, I'll, no. just, I'll trump the dummy. I'll trump in the dummy, exactly. But here is the problem. And the problem mm. is, and that's why I said South is the base. Mm. We must count the club as two losers. After winning your ace and the king, you still have two more clubs left in south. The opponent still might have the queen and the jack. And I must treat those two clubs as potential moves. Why? Because if you draw the trumps, and as we know, in many cases, most cases, you will start with trumps and you'll try to get rid of all the trumps from your opponents. Let's assume that the trumps break three and one, which is very likely. It's almost 50%. Mm. So, you will need three rounds, which you it's not a problem. You have the ace, king, queen. You will take them very easily. But after those three rounds, you will be left with only one trump in north. Would you agree with that? Because there are four trumps here, and three of them right. will go uh, to, the, uh, to draw the trumps. And what happens then is that you can trump only one club. You cannot trump both of the clubs that you still potential losers in south. 
and the second right. one will definitely be uh, a loser. Okay, so it is important to realize that there are, or there is, let's say, if you assume that the hearts is, let's say, three one as the worst case scenario, you could say, okay. I will allow you to count uh, potentially trumping one club and having one loser, but it is recommended to look at, at, mm. at it as I have two losers and I can trump one or both of them in order to reduce the losers. And that's what brings us to the third step. And probably the most important, that's a very a common mistake, okay? To think that if you counted your losers, that that's good, and then you can start playing. So counting the losers is absolutely not relevant in any way. If you are not going to do the next step, which is asking yourself how to reduce the losers or how to get rid of losers, so don't bother to count losers. It's completely redundant. It doesn't help you because the goal of the game is not to lose. The, the goal of the game is to win. But the point is counting the losers, okay, is a way to help you with realizing where your losers are and it might help in, in determining how to get rid of them. But if you're not doing the third step, which is the most important in the whole mm. uh, uh, scenario, then don't bother to count losers. It's just a waste of time. And I'm not joking. Right. You can say it. right. I, it's too much for me. I'm not saying that in sometimes, I don't know, you played already 10 hands, two hours, three hours, you are too tired and you just want to play. And I accept it. Okay, and I, I, it happens a lot. It's fine. Okay, but if you take took the time to invest in improving the game and and you know and doing some kind of analysis, then counting the losers on its own is completely redundant. Okay, absolutely waste waste of time. Remember, those two steps two and three are always attached together. Mm. Okay. Okay, and then. Number three is to look for uh, ways to reduce losers. I will try to give a few general uh, ideas about uh, uh, you know reducing losers and getting rid of losers that can help you, not necessarily in this hand. Okay, mm -hmm. but before that, uh, Bajir, maybe you have a few questions. Maybe I've added too much. Oh, it's, I, I, no, it's 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 really interesting. It feels like a subtle but really important switch from thinking about, well, how can we win as many tricks as possible, to instead framing as, let's look for the potential losers. Where are we potentially vulnerable, and how can we reduce those vulnerabilities? If we're just focused on winning tricks, then yeah, we might just rattle through our trumps and find ourselves in trouble towards the end when we're stuck with those extra clubs. Correct. Correct. If you don't... The, few, the, the advantages of thinking about losers could be, A, exactly what you said, because let's say you draw, you draw the trumps and you haven't realized you could abuse them uh, more effectively. That's one. But another thing, and a very common mistake that I see all the time with students, is choosing the correct discount. And discounts and bridge in general is a very interesting uh, topic. And once I even done a lesson that was discussing only discounts. From the mm. point of view of, it could be either defense, which is also very interesting. We are not doing it today, but discounts in general are very interesting. What to do when you when you can't follow the suit? What shall I do? What shall I discount? Which suit? And when you count losers, it is very uh, helpful to focus you where the losers are. So, for instance, if Theoretically, and it will happen in this hand at some point, and you'll see the importance. Let's say that you have a trick in north, okay, and you don't have any more cards left in south. So you have a void in south, you have a trick in north, you win a trick, you are not going to trump it, obviously, because it's yours, but you need to decide whether to discard the two of diamond or the two of club. So in theory, you would say, this is a two of diamond, this is a two of club, what's the difference? I can, I can discard either, yes? But when you count losers, you realize that the diamonds are losers that there is nothing you can do with. Clubs are losers that you might be able to trump in all. You realize, right. for instance, in this case, that the diamonds are much more important to get rid of. Because there is no ah. other way to ah. 
uh, reduced it, for instance. So there is a big difference between the two of the ions or the two of club in this sense. But it's hard to realize that if you haven't actually analyzed uh, right. all the suits and counted and found your losers. Okay, right. so I would say in this hand, in order to get rid of club losers, I probably will attempt to trump at least one or maybe even both of them in north. And the diamond, we have to find a different way if it exists. Yeah, sometimes right. it won't exist, it depends on that. Okay, but if it exists, we will uh, look for it. Okay, mm. make it a bit clearer now, uh, Bajir. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Gosh, I, okay. I I I think you and I we we could uh, we could talk <laughs> probably for a blue moon. Yeah, let's uh, let's get to the card play. Let's uh, talk talk okay. through this one. Okay, so now let's uh, uh, let's quickly go over potential of getting rid of losers. Yeah, so we have okay. this we have mentioned already most of them. So we have these cards. Basically, you establish a suit, and then you win tricks in one side while the other side is already gone. It's already finished, mm. and then and you can simply get rid of them. We have trumping in the short side of the trump, in our case, trumping the club in north. Mm -hmm. Another option, which is very common, is a technique, like finesse. Yeah, so sometimes, uh, you know, a potential mm. loser to a king, but you can finesse it, and then it will usually be 50-50 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So those are the main, the main options. Technical options which will usually be finesse, uh, trumping in the shorthand, or the classic of just establishing a suit, and doesn't matter how you establish it, it could be sequence, it could be length, uh, whatever mm. way you manage to, to gain tricks, or you just have the tricks. As in, if, if we had, let's say, the queen of spades in north, after winning our ace king, you simply have the queen as a master, and you can immediately uh, discard. Okay, so that concludes the the third uh, step and now if you feel we're ready we'll go to the last one and then we'll start okay. after we have realized how to uh, reduce losers we need to make sure that we have the communication to do it we have access where we need so it could be for instance if you want to perform a finesse you need access to a certain side yes because finesses have to initiate from a certain side as I assume you know. And if we're talking about establishing a suit, sometimes after you establish a suit, and that's classic what I've discussed earlier, that you won't have access to that side. So remember, if you're trying to establish length, the long side is crucial. You need access to the side where that suit is longer. Because at some point, you won't have cards at the other side. So those are the four steps. If you go and analyze and uh, uh, using those four steps, you are on definitely the right track to uh, success. Now, if all of that is clear and there are no questions, I will uh, explain my thinking in this hand and how I have implemented it. This is the hand I I I, I played. Yes. So I'll just uh, I can just explain my thinking if if that's if that sounds yes, good to please. you. Yes, please. Okay, so my thing in this hand was this. After I counted the losers throwing diamond throwing clubs, I realized that clubs, at least some of them, one, hopefully two, that depends on the hard break with the opponents. Yes, because if it's two, two, it's very easy. I just need two rounds and then I can trump two clubs after drawing the trumps, which is, of course, the best way because then you cannot be over trumped, etc. So mm. that's the club suit. Diamond, of course, is the most problematic suit here because the losers here are, I mean, they have the ace king, yes? Luckily for me, they haven't led diamonds. If they would have led diamonds, of course, that nothing I can do. Nothing they can we can do. Cash their diamonds, but they didn't know, obviously, that they have all those diamonds. Uh, West knows only what he has. So, luckily for me, they didn't find the lead. And here I found an interesting option. Okay, this is a very interesting technique, a very useful technique, and that's establishing a suit, establishing length by trumping. Yes, usually, in many cases, we establish length, especially in no-trump contracts, just by playing the suit. We, we might lose one or two tricks, but you know, after a while, you got rid of all the cards from your opponents, and then you remain with uh, extra tricks. Mm -hmm. Looking at the Straight suit, it's 
very interesting we can establish the length without losing tricks because we can using we can use the drum suit yes so look at the fate we have seven cards they have six right of course that we don't know how they split and we hope for a, a three three split but it could be four and two that's usually the options okay even if it's four two we can still establish tricks so let's see we play the ace king okay i'm Talking about the spades detached from the trans for one second. We play mm -hmm. the ace king, go back to north, and we play one more spade, and we trump it. Okay? Already we play three rounds. The trump itself, when we played this, the third spade and trumpet, it didn't help us in any way, it didn't give us any tricks. Okay? But right. it reduces the spades. I mean, I'm drawing spades for my opponents. Right. If the distribution was 3 3, at that point, all the spades are gone from his flex because we have played three rounds. Are you with me? Lincoln King, yes. And one round that I've trumped. At that point, the last two spades left in North, the 10 and 8, will become masters. So that's if we are lucky. If we are left lucky, okay, okay, and the spade splits four and two, we can still go back to North, play another spade, and trump it again. And at that point, we have drawn the last spade from whoever uh, uh, opponent who had four of them, and the last spade, the 10, will become a master. So that's a lot of work for one trick, but one trick, you know, could be the difference between 95% to 25% in many hands. Yes, if we're playing right. uh, match points. Uh, so looking for one trick is uh, could be important, yes? So, yeah, so I, I, I looked at the spade suit, and for me, the spade suit is the key in this hand. That's my main a way, okay, to uh, win more tricks and to get rid of my uh, diamond tossers. Right. Okay. The one thing, when I get to the fourth step, I realize that I will need a lot of access to which side, Bajir? Where well, we, we need, need access to? If, if we're setting up the spade suit, we need to be able to play from the north hand. So how are we exactly. going to get there? Exactly, because after you play the asking of spade, you are stuck in south, you have to go to north. You trump a spade, you are stuck in south, you have to go to north. So I realized that I need a lot of access to north. So I'm focusing the uh, during the game about getting to north. I have the ace of club, which is an excellent access. Of course, mm -hmm. I have the trumps, but the trumps are a little bit of a problem because you cannot hold the trumps for too long. Obviously, at some point, your mm -hmm. opponents are trumping you. Okay? Right. So uh, that's, of course, uh, uh, something to think about. And one more access to the dummy, which is a little bit elusive, is trumping a club. Right. Okay? So that's one more access that uh, I have in mind. With having all that in mind, we can, uh, we can start, no? Okay. If you're ready. Let's let's go for it. Okay. So follow the spades from dummy and win my ace. Could have won the king. Doesn't really make a difference. First of all, I want to smell the uh, the trump position. So it's not like a four zero or something, which obviously will change. Uh, will might might change a lot of options. So I'm playing one heart with the ace. By the way, when you have ace king queen of trumps, in most cases it will be recommended to keep one. A honor in each side. So I have ace king okay. in north and queen in south. I play my either ace or king and I keep the king in north, the queen in south. In case, you know, if the distribution is bad, you have a, a, the option to finesse either opponents or access either side. It is, it's not always correct, but in most cases, it would mm -hmm. be much better to be, you know, control in each side. Yes, I don't want to Makes play sense. the queen and then, you know, have only. A, a high cards in north. So yeah. I, it's not 4 0, thank God. And now, going back to the vault, four trumps for the opponents, minus two. I've taken two of them. Okay. Yeah. So at that point, the new number is two. Number two goes back to the vault. Right. Okay. You'll come in the middle of Still the game. Two more trumps to draw. Out. Out. Yeah. Two, two are out. I know that one of them is the jack, if you want to add also the high cards. Not better mm. to okay at this point. 
I can't continue drawing the trumps uh, easily. Uh, I still want to investigate what's going on. Maybe I want to trump clubs. Maybe I want to establish the spades. Okay. Mm. So two trumps are out, and I'm playing a one more round of trumps to the queen mm. of hearts. Now, why did I play low to the queen? Okay. Why not the king? Go back and remember what we discussed about access. I need access to north. Right. We need to be able to get back to north. So at this point, I have three access cards to north. I have the king of hearts, I have the eighth of club, and I have potentially trumping one club. Okay? So that's enough access to establish the spades. And, and also, of course, now that we realize where the jack is, it's a good thing that we still have that king up there. Correct. Now we know that uh, exactly the distribution of the hearts because East didn't follow. So we've taken one more heart. Two that was in the vault. Minus one from West is one. There is only one heart left, which is the Jack, and it is loca located in West. Now I have a problem. I don't want to take the last trump at this point because then it will reduce the access to the dummy. I'll have, I'm, I'm, I have to use the King of Hearts. What do I want to do before I'm going to the King of Hearts? I want mm. to unblock the spade suit. Because if I play now how to the king, and then I go to spades, exact, it will take me back to south, which is not good for me. Yes, right. Because then I cannot uh, trump the spades. So I want to play my king of spades before I go to the king of hearts. Do you see the advantage? Yes. Yes. Okay, I play the king of spades, and then when I play the heart, I'll access north and easily can trump a spade. Okay, so right. I'm playing the king of spades. Everybody follows. So, by the way, the nine dropped in east, which is interesting. But if we go back to the count, uh, and then now here, this is the point of how many sorts you can count. If you can count two sorts in a game, usually it will be enough. Okay, the trump suit you have to count. There is no question. Mm -hmm. You never take the trump. On top of the trump suit, usually to count one more suit will be will be sufficient. Yes, don't try to count all the suits. It's completely redundant. It's usually not so helpful for for, for, for us learners. Suit, yes. So for us learners, it, just as uh, we've worked to keep track of how many trumps are still out there. It could be too yeah, much so if we worry about keeping track of all four of the suits, but just pick one more suit to really that is to keep track. Yes, that is relevant. And the key is to choosing the correct suit. Okay, so okay. one of the advantages of the analysis is that we realized, okay, Spain is the suit that we are trying to establish. This is the suit that I want to count. I don't need to count the club. I don't right. need to count the diamonds. It's less important for me. I'm counting right. all trumps. And the suit that usually there will be right. one more suit that we're trying to do something with, completely sufficient. You don't need right. uh, to. And what happens? Like I, I, I've seen people who are trying to count more, and of course, then you you mix everything. Yes, and then you don't remember even one of them. It's very smoke common. starts coming out of our ears. I start banging my head against the wall. Yeah, it's too much. Exactly. It's too much for me. It's too much. And, and, and the good news is that it's not. It's not usually not needed. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So it just the key sounds, it sounds manageable. manageable. Okay, so it the is, spade. So how many spades, spades are still out there? Let's see. We haven't counted so far, but we can rewind because we had ace king. We played two rounds of spades. Yes. Right. If we remember right. that we had seven spades, two in hand and five in dummy. Yes, right. Which means that our opponents had six. Yes, and if you remember when right. we analyzed the new. We took two rounds. Obviously, they were everybody followed because if in the second round everybody followed, the first one was definitely everybody followed. So right. we have taken two in each round, which is four. Yes. So opponents had six to begin with. Four of them we have taken. Correct. Mm -hmm. How many are left? So there's six two left. left. Those, those two left. That's it. You see, even that we haven't focused mm. it when it happened. You know, it was the opening lead. Right. You know, right. You can always reconstruct. I mean, no, not always, but if you are mm. a little bit focused, you should be able to 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 go back there. You know, we're focused mm. more on the trump suit. Fine. 
Okay, at this point, I hear I led the 10 because the 9 was played. I thought, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. I could have played the 7. And uh, East follows the suit, and of course, I trump it. Now, there are two okay. options. If the last spade was in West, which is, by the way, very lucky, very likely, if you remember, West have led the Queen of Spades originally, right. which usually implies that he would have the Queen and the Jack. Yes, leading a normal top of the sequence lead. Uh, so that's very likely to happen now. Okay? Uh, but even if not, we, we would still manage. In this case, of course, I was quite lucky. The Jack uh, dropped. The Spades did break three and three. And at this point, I realized those are the last two spades gone from the game, and my two spades in the dummy are uh, masters. Okay, uh, Yanev, I, I'm so sorry. Let me run this boy downstairs. This is my son, Sora. Sora, this is Yanev. Uh, he he, uh, he escaped into the room. <laughs> Let me go get him downstairs. One sec, and I'll uh, cut this in a sec. One second. Okay, so I'm leading. I'm leading now the ten of spades. Not crucial if you want to lead another one, uh, the seven or the eight, it wouldn't make a difference. And remembering that West have led the Queen of Spades implies that it's very likely to have the Jack as well. Yes, because right. usually you lead off the sequence. It's not 100%, but it's very likely. In any case, I trump the, the spade and let's see what happens. And of course, in this case, I was a bit lucky that the spades did split three and three. Okay, it could have been four and two, of course, but if you look now at the position, even if it was four and two, and I'll and I'll and, and I'll show that quickly, I would still be able to establish my last bet because I have still kept two access to the dummy. One of them is the ace of club. Yeah, so yeah. Let, let me just do what would happen if the spade suit was not breaking through. If there was one more spade, let's say in the game. Okay, sure. what I would have done is. I would have played a club to the ace, mm -hmm. a spade, trump it, yes, assuming right. that there is trump, and then we'll, it will establish my seven, okay? Right. So uh, I cannot show that because then I have to open all the cards, but I, I trump sure, it. Sure, 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 sure. I, and then king of club to the six, another club trumped with the ten of hearts in north, and now I can enjoy my seven of spades, which I worked very hard to establish. Right. And you see, so, that, or was it difficult? Yes. No, it makes complete sense. And because we were so thoughtful in rem, um, keeping in, our entries back, keeping to our entries is correct. And remember mm. what I said to begin you don't want right. to get to a position where you have a few tricks or even one trick in the dummy and you cannot access it. So it should be the communication in your head right. uh, as much as possible. But here uh, we are, also, even luckier. And the spades broke just how we were hoping they might. Correct. So what I have done in in my case, it was easier when I when I get when I go to the ace of club into the north. Of course, I can enjoy my spades now, and I don't need to trump it. Uh, luckily, but here we go back to the losers question. What do we discard on those two, to, on those two spades, eights and the seven? Are we discarding the clubs or the diamonds? Oh, if I we see. really, or, yeah, okay, Bajir, what do you think? based on our analysis. Well, you know, it's just what you've done. I, If you hadn't guided us through this, I would have accepted those diamonds as losers and because they seem like the hardest to get rid of. Because of what we've set up, it feels like, oh, we actually have a chance to get rid of one of the diamond losers. Am I right in recognizing that that is another of the benefits? The, 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 another of the benefits, just... Uh... Repeat again. That w setting up these spades yeah. turned the the diamond losers. Now we we can get rid of the diamond losers. Um, exactly. The club. Can, there are other ways to get rid of them, or oh, the, 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 we correct. might not even have to deal with them. Exactly, because we know. By the way, in this point, it is visible that at least one of the clubs could be trumped. With the ten of hearts, there is no question. Right. Yes. Don't forget, there are no hearts at this point. Yes, we are after this, uh, after drawing the thumbs already. So clubs now. Also, I don't know if you can see it. In theory, I might be lucky, and the last club might be the ten of club might be established. Maybe the queen and jack will go. You know, don't forget, we had the ace, we had the king, we are thumping one. So who knows? The diamonds, there is nothing you can do with. 
Once the opponents will get to hand, they will simply win the race king of diamond, and there is absolutely nothing you can do. So realizing that clubs are losers, but potentially could be dealt with in other ways, i.e. in our mm. case, with the uh, heart uh, in north, you realize that you want to get rid of those diamonds. Mm. Okay? Mm -mm. But that's uh, one of the advantages of planning the hand in advance. Okay, so I'm discarding my uh, two of diamonds and I'm using now my seven of spades to get rid of the nine of diamonds, not the three of clubs, not the ten of clubs, the nine of diamonds. This is my loser here. Now we are already in a very good position. Of course, we were lucky with the spades, but remember, when we'll get back to the end, you'll see the spades suit doesn't, many people would have missed the spades suit as something so uh, relevant. Yes, you have a king, the rest are low, it seems. Not so relevant, but looking mm. at the space and realizing the potential is there was the key in this hand. What's left now? Many people might be tempted to play diamond and trumpet now from north, but that would be wrong because I can still see, and you know, I'm not not always so greedy in life, but in bridge, I'm a very greedy player, and all of you <laughs> should be. And at this point, I can win 12 tricks. I don't know if you can see it because I have my king of club. I can trump one club and I have another trump in my hand. So more than one loser I'm not going to have in this hand, okay? So I have already 12 tricks. Most people would be very happy and say, okay, let's go home. Uh, as I said, I'm greedy. I'm not going home at any point unless I'm going to maximize and squeeze any trick possible from any corner of the hand. So... Where can we get one more thing? If I'm trumping the diamond, there is no chance the jack of diamond will be established because the ace king went about. On the other hand, look at the club suit. We had six of them, they had seven. I don't know if you remember, one of them was already discarded on the way. But if we are lucky, if we are lucky, not even not connected to the discard, if we are lucky, when we play the king now, maybe the jack or the queen will drop. And when we play the three and we trump it, maybe the other, you know, the, the, the jack or the, the other honor that we are missing mm. is drop as well. Who knows? There is a chance. It's not amazing, but it does exist that my 10 of club will be established. Okay? And uh, I, and you, 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 you're you so good. You saved us an entry back to Thel. Yes, we still have the eight of hearts. Yeah, so that's the key. So if I play a diamond now in trumpet, then again, it kills my entry to Thel. You're not so getting back there. Those, the, the communication is always there. It's crazy. Even only four mm. cards left, still, you have to think about communication. It, mm. it's, never, it's never gone. Uh, yes, but remember, the diamond is definitely... They have Ace King Queen. They are not, there is no way you, you're going to, to get rid of the Ace King Queen uh, in one round in the diamond suit, yes? Mm. So I went with the club, praying for something nice. Oh, already? I'm happy. The queen is gone. Let's see. I'm winning my king of club. Playing the three mm. of clubs. The jack. Two clubs were uh, discarded, uh, uh, you know, through the hand when we won the trump, when we uh, won the spades. I, I didn't have to pay attention to that. Why? Because it's not so relevant. Diamonds is not relevant for me anyway. Yes. So club was my only chance. Mm. And in this case, luckily for me, it did... Uh, it did happen, you know, the opponents were in a very difficult state. They have to make a lot of discards here during the, the hand. They don't know mm. that I have nothing in the diamond, so otherwise they will mm. discard more diamonds. Uh, and that's it. Now what happens is I can go back to my hand by trumping a diamond and, start, and completing all 13 tricks by winning my uh, now established 10 of clubs. That's the hand. That is it's so cool. Nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a very nice hand. Demonstrate few interesting techniques, but I think that the main thing, and if we'll remind, rewind back, the steps that we have taken are general. Yes, you can take those mm. steps in any hand, any tram contract. They're very important. Only suit contract. Mm. Yes, you cannot mm. uh, not for no tram. No tram is a different department, which is very interesting as well, of course, but. Not not for days. That's, mm. Even though uh, communication is always relevant, even in all time. But we saw the losers, we saw the planning, we saw the importance of trying to think about how to get rid of those uh, uh, losers. And of course, the implementation of that. 
and communication. Yes, that's the fourth and last and maybe most important uh, aspect. If you think about it, communication is key in in, in the clearer play. Uh, that's it. More questions if you have, just to finish, uh, to summarize, that's the time. Wow, yeah, well, it's just so helpful. I, I um, Besides how helpful it is seeing those uh, four steps, which we can just keep in mind, and uh, it, it two, two points, two things that you said that I know I'm going to take with me. One, even when it's clear what we're going to do in trick one, to stop, to really internalize this process so that Correct. it's just always there. And then the second uh, that this hand illustrated so well, if we're focusing on just winning trumps, winning tricks, mm -hmm. we would have just made our contract with this hand. But Good. if we're focused on eliminating losers, this hand showed what can be opened up. Mm -hmm. And actually to add one other thing, which I, I found so helpful was for, especially for us learners, of course we need to keep track of how many trumps are still out there. Just pick one more suit and work well, on keeping it. That's the key. Uh, mm, right, right, one. right. And the analysis, as you have mentioned, don't start playing, don't get into this trap of, okay, I'll play, I'll see, you know, next trick, or mm. I'll think later. And, you know, many people have this tendency of playing, thinking uh, uh, 10 seconds before each trick. Yes? Yeah. Or, you know, so they play one trick, they think a little bit. They play two, a second trick. They, what I do, and what is obviously recommended, and all teachers, I'm sure, will agree, is to take all the time that you wanted to think between the tricks and think only once, or mainly once, at the beginning, before you start mm. making mistakes, before you start playing. You take one minute, two minutes, as long as you need. It's very common. People shouldn't look at you weird that you're thinking, this is the game, and you you... What will happen if you if you master that? You'll see that then the game goes smoothly because you know what you are doing. Not to win an ace or to draw one trump, but you have a plan that is much more complete about the hand as a general, looking at mm. the, the the overview of the hand and the communication. In our case, it was the combination of at establishing the space and accessing the dummy. That was our key. We needed the false counting here and there, but that was the main plan. And when you execute it, it's supposed to go relatively smoothly. Okay. Mm. So those are the four steps. Uh, maybe quickly one more time, we'll go over them. Yes. Remember, let me pull them up. All of those four steps, all of those four steps should be analyzed or treated before you have touched one count. It's mm. only looking at dummy and declarer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So trumps, always you count how many do I have, how many they have, put it in your head and deduct it exactly as we've seen during the, the hand. And of course, you can go over, you know, remind and see again. Every time the trumps was played, immediately we deduct. Mm -hmm. So trump. Second, look for losers. Remember, losers, I'm thinking about my opponents. They have high mm -hmm. cards against me. How can they use it against me? And when can I trump? The diamond suit was a very easy example. They had the ace and the king. They had the queen as well. But of course, after two rounds, I can start trumping. The club suit was more elusive. Remember, the side where the trumps are longer will be your base. From there, mm. this hand will be the base. And from there, you're counting the losers. Of course, you have high cards on the other side as well that you use. But in terms of the trumps, Yes, you think about trumping on the dummy or on the other side, you cannot you cannot use it to reduce to to say I don't have losers, like the club suit. You cannot say those are losers, and if you want to eliminate those losers, you need to trump them in dummy and you have to think about it. Because if you draw the trumps, and that happens a lot, if the if this if the fit was five and three, it's a totally different story. After three rounds of drawing trumps, you'll have none left in dummy. Mm. Okay, and then you can't trump even once. Because in our case, we had a fine four uh, fit, which is of course a different scenario, which is a bit easier. But still, counting the losers from the side where the trumps are long. In our case, it was south. 
Third, this is very important, as I said before, counting the users is absolutely worthless if you are not doing the third step, which is, okay, what do I do? I don't want to lose things. I'm not counting the losers because I'm happy to lose, okay? I'm counting the losers because I want to eliminate them. In our case, at the end, we were able to eliminate all losers. We had four, we got rid of all of them, okay? A little bit luck at the end with the clubs, but three of them, definitely we got rid by planning. Two of them we discarded on the spades. Yes, we established that they discarded two diamonds. One of them we trumped in the short side of the trump on, in, in north and the dummy. And the last one was established again after trumping uh, the club. But in the analysis stage, you're thinking, okay, those are my losers. Can I get rid of some of them, all of them, most of them, as many as you can get rid of? Better, of course. Last but not least, communication. Yes, and communication between dummy and declarer, like in life, communication is key for everything. Yes, if you, if we would have established the space but wouldn't keep the, the Ace of Club or a way to access it, you can't enjoy it and you have done nothing. You have established the space mm. and you're able to go back there. And some people might play, let's play the Ace King of Club or Trump a Club before. And then the whole then the hand is gone. You will never be able to get back to those spades, and you won't be able to win more than uh, the ten tricks. Uh, that's it. And I hope next time you play a Trump contract, you can implement all of those for relatively easy. Well, some of them are more difficult than others, but manageable steps. Okay, let's say hopefully, and you just have to practice it more and master it, and that's the way to improve. I'm, I'm feeling uh, inspired. I'm feeling motivated. Uh, to everyone who watched, thank you for joining us. Uh, Yanif, thank you. Uh, we, 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 very much. It was, it was one hand. We got, we got a full lesson. Uh, so thank you so much for taking the time. I think you've given us all so much to think about uh, in our next session, but probably for us learners over the next number of years, we, we can keep practicing these four important steps. Exactly. It's 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 a practice process, and you should be improving all the time. Thank well, you. we look forward to uh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, and to everyone who watched. If you uh, come across an interesting hand and you uh, put these steps to work, if it works out well, please let us know. Leave a comment, send an email in. You can email it to me at hello at learnbridgeonline.com. Yanif, it would be so wonderful to have you back for another video or two. So let's all keep an eye out for interesting hands. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bajil. Bye, Bye everyone.